Tib is when you actually the cat in the bag. The Common Core uh, are standards that uh, California and uh, most of the other states in, in the United States have uh, adopted. We used to teach uh, a mile wide and an inch deep, and now we teach you know, a mile deep and, and, and less wide. Um, trying to get students to think critically. Wait, is this, is this okay? What we see very um, typically now in, in our classrooms is um, the, the teacher not giving a traditional lesson of, you know, here's some vocabulary and here's some notes and this is what, what you need to know, now study it and give it back on a test. Um, it's, it's much more presented in a, um, uh, an overarching or directed question that the students have to then research, find out, discuss, collaborate, and then present what they've, they've found. And that's a very difficult uh, type of lesson actually to prepare. It's, it, it sounds like it's all on the student, but it's really the, the teacher doing a lot of preparatory work to guide the students. Um, what we're doing here is teaching inquiry-based learning. Part of inquiry is engagement, and it's starting a unit or a lesson by piquing their interest. A strong part of culture is language and how culture is transmitted through language. So, so what I had the students do is go home and find a proverb from their culture, make a connection to their real life, so make it more authentic. And so they brought that proverb in to share. So now we're all warmed up, we're talking about ourselves, and now we're going to apply what we've learned at home to what we're doing in school. To them, they're just doing Hindu proverbs and talking about their families and cultures. And to me, we're doing literal, figurative, we're writing, we're illustrating, so we're doing multiple modes of communication. What is culture? That's a driving question. We try to find out information. Everything we learn points to them, the question. And one of the, the components or strands in culture is language. And under language, it's numbers. It's not a surprise that numbers is the most common way, the easiest way to learn because it's very logical. And uh, the Chinese language, if you learn from 1 through 10, you can write to 99. So for the last three weeks, we've been talking about culture. They share their personal culture boxes. We are in the process of extending their own culture to apply to other cultures, such as the Chinese culture, the target culture. This is sort of our sense-making combination project. We put all that together, and I asked them to design a hopscotch game, which is common in Chinese culture as well. So these are commonalities. And so today was a demonstration where they use what they've learned um, present their finished product um, so for others to experience and enjoy. Our driving question um, for the year for humanities is that uh, conflict creates change, good and bad. And our essential question for this particular unit is how does manifest destiny um, create change for the United States. Today what the kids are doing is looking at um, some artwork um, of various aspects of our expansion from sea to shining sea. I'm still teaching lessons on Texas's annexation, the gold rush, the, um, the different routes that people took going west, Mexican secession, the Mexican war. I'm still teaching all those and the pictures looking at today are pictures that represent each of the lessons. So after the lesson, we'll be looking at the pictures to see what else do you see now? And how does it correspond to this concept of manifest destiny and the expansion? We, we've really done it now across uh, all curriculum, in, including physical education, where we have students who are re researching, you know, the, the best way to warm up or the best way to stretch, or the and, and instead of a coach just telling them, they have to experience it and come come to the conclusions.